Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, and it's Debsy, and the place to be, it's Debsy. Bloop, that's me. Boop, Debsy. Hey guys, happy Tuesday, and I hope everybody is having a great day. If not a good, great day, then a good day. So, it is Tuesday. So that means it's the day after the premiere of The New Bachelorette. It is the 20th anniversary of The Bachelorette, and... I watched it last night. So let's get into it. Listen, I have to tell you, I did like Charity on a last season, on Zach's season. Um, I like her just because she seems very real. She doesn't seem to be like one of these, I don't want to say highly polished, but she seems like she might just be a, like a real person um, who can at times be like goofy and who isn't like totally... 100% polished. I mean, she is polished, but I don't know. She just seems to be a little bit more down to earth than some of the others. So let's get into it right off the bat. Please, ABC, take note. I know you don't watch this. I'm a teeny tiny, tiny channel. Um, so you probably won't see this, but please, please stop with Zach. I don't need to see any more of him. I am still traumatized by the hundreds and hundreds and thousands of shower scenes from The Last Bachelor. So please, let this be the last time we see that dry piece of toast, Zach Shell Cross. Thank you. Please and thank you. Um, as always, they went through, they did a little bit of, um, let's take a look back and see how, see how Charity got here as The Bachelorette. Listen, I know when they announced when they announced her last season as the Bachelorette, it was made to look like 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 oh, what? Uh are you kidding me? You're asking me to be the Bachelorette? What? I don't know. I think it, I think that she had, she had to have known that she that they were going to ask her that there was a possibility that they were going to ask her to be the bachelorette. So then we get into uh, the uh, arrivals, the limousine arrivals. Um, I like I like the limousine arrivals just because I like to see the really the ones that go over the top, like the ones that come in in like an odd rather than just coming in in like the limo. I like ones that come in in something different or that involve like bringing animals or just some odd unusual entrance. I like that. So I, I'm not going to go over every single one, but listen, first and foremost, we have a Yinzer. We have a Yinzer on the Bachelorette. Tanner, who is a mortgage lender. He is from Pittsburgh, he's a Yinzer, 412 in his house. So Tanner is from Pittsburgh. Tanner um, started to say when we go, he started to say something like, um, when we go to the football, when we go to the football games on Sunday, cheer on this, the, the Pittsburgh Steelers, we do it with a terrible towel. So I brought, and I thought he was going to bring out a terrible towel and wave it around, but he did not. He brought a Tanner towel, a towel with a T on it. I was like, mm, Tanner, come on. But I'm willing to overlook that because he looks like, he looks like he's a nice guy. And he's not hard on the eyes either. Then we had the guy, I didn't, I, I did not even bother to write down his name because it was so ridiculous. You know how at the bottom where it says what their name is? So his job was he is a world record breaking jumper. So you jump, he got out, he did a backflip and it set the world on fire. So your job is jumping then. So you make up, you make your money by jumping on shit. That's what you do? How do you put that on a W-2 form? I jump over shit. That, how? Okay. Also, Brayden. Let's just talk about Brayden. I didn't like Brayden from the very beginning. Sure, he brought shots, but listen, he was giving me, he was giving me a vibe that I just didn't like. Like, you remember when 
Johnny was on the season with um, Gabby and Rachel. Um, and as soon as I saw him, I was like, I don't know about him. I don't know if he could, I don't know if he's really serious. Well, then we came to find out that he did grow on me then on Bachelor in Paradise because he, he kind of, he changed. He like matured. Um, but, but I don't know. Brayden is giving me those kind of, those kind of vibes. I just, I just did not. There was something about Brayden from the very beginning. I did not like Spencer, who's martial arts guy. Now, listen, at first I thought maybe he's shy, but then when his eyes got all big and he was like, I was like, wait, is he creepy? No, he might be creepy. Like he might be the guy that like you wake up and you see him in your room staring at you. And then he licks like the instep of your foot or something <laughs> weird, <laughs> something odd. Like he would be sitting there with your, with like creepy dolls watching you sleep and then steal your, your insoles from your shoes and lick them or something. I don't know, but it was, it was odd. Like it, it creeped me out a little bit, but then you come to find out that he was just really nervous because he has, he has a, a, he has a kid, a, a son, I believe he has a child and he didn't know how, how charity would, um, would take that, you know, how, how she would warm up to it. Um, so I don't know. Do I still think he might be a little creepy? I mean, he might, but he probably is, he probably is harmless. Um, okay. Uh, Caleb B, the pro wrestler. Now, when he's a pro wrestler, was like, pro wrestler? What do you mean? Because pro wrestler for me means like, listen, I will tell you straight up. Back in the day, I watched WWF. I watched WWF when it was like, when it was um, like Hulk Hogan and um, and Cindy Lauper was in was in on it and stuff like that. I watched it then. But then I also started watching it when it was like Stone Cold Steve Austin and The Rock um, and Generation, what was it? Generation DX. I, you know, I, I did watch it then. Okay. So there was like, for me, there's like WWE, well now it's WWE. And then I don't know what else there is, but there's other ones that are like televised. So for me, when he said pro wrestler, I was like, pro wrestler, do you mean pro wrestler or do you mean like hey I'm famous in my town for putting on these backyard you know matches and I jump off the roof into like someone's picnic table I don't know but he he said that his persona in wrestling is a self-loving douche awesome um but I, I will have to tell you as the night went on maybe he maybe he might not be that bad I mean it may it, maybe his he's not a self-loving douche in real life I mean maybe he's just not a douche he's he seems to be okay to me I mean I can't do I see her going real far with with a wrestler I don't know about that but I mean he seems he seems like he might be a good guy um, and then Sean, Sean with the giant check, this was corny as shit. You get a giant check and he says, I'm donating my heart to charity. He makes it out to charity and it's his heart. Stupid. I'm sorry. You told, you towed around a giant check. Ugh, that's dumb. Um, and then we had Peter, the pilot, please ABC don't do this anymore. No more pilots named Peter. Please. Listen. Don't. That should be a person that they should never be allowed to take. What's your name? Peter. What do you do? I'm a pilot. Fuck no. Get out. That's it. Okay. So the people that I really did like from the beginning. I really, I really liked um, Doton. Boy, he was a tall drink of water. I liked Doton and who else? John. I liked John a lot. I also, I also liked, I enjoyed Joey, the guy who was from, um, he said he was born in Philadelphia, but then he, but then he grew up in, he was born and raised in Philadelphia, but then he moved to Hawaii. And at first when he said Hawaii, the look was like, oh, oh. 
And I was like, uh-oh, what's up with that? But I did like Joey, and she seemed to like Joey a lot, too. Um, so then... So then Jesse Palmer says, hey, we have somebody who would really like to meet you. And they asked specifically to come here. And if my first thought, honestly, was like, fuck it, this is Blake Moynes. I'm going to just throw myself out this window. Blake Moynes again? It wasn't Blake Moynes. It, it, was, it was her brother. He stepped out. Um, Nehemiah stepped out. And listen, I think they are such a great... I think they're such a great sibling, a pair of siblings. I do. I love, I just, I love them. But wait, he's going to stick around. He says he's going to stick around. He's going to spy on these guys to see what they're talking about. But he puts on this disguise. Who? Who would think that this disguise would be like, the people would be like, that looks real. I'm going to tell you, that looks real. He puts on this mustache and then puts on, at first, I was like, wait, is he, is he supposed to be, like, is he supposed to be, uh, like, Samuel L. Jackson from, from Pulp Fiction or something? They put the hat on, and I, then it came to me. I was like, wait a minute. That, that wig he put on looked like, looked like Randy Watson. Randy Watson. <laughs> the character from... The character from Coming Coming to America, where it's my favorite scene in the whole movie, where um, Eddie Murphy is playing Randy Watson. He comes up to sing with sexual chocolate, and, they, and he screws up that Whitney Houston song. He looked like he had a Randy Watson. He looked like he had a Randy Watson wig on. Oh my god, I was dying. So. Okay, we're doing all this. We do the cocktail party. Um, the guys that she was digging on. She was really digging on Joey. Um, it's the, the guy from Hawaii. Um, she said James was precious. He was like, he was a precious sweet lamb. Because that's the one, that's the one that brought the present from his mom. And his mom wrote like a letter. His mom was kind of fangirling out a little bit um, to the bachelorette. But then included like that. What was it? Oh, it was um, it was cider and donuts. Oh, and he was so sweet. Oh, that's right. I thought he. I thought he was really nice too. She, the first kiss that she gave out was to Xavier. She was like, "Is he too good to be true?" Uh, but then wait, she was going really hard at it with Brayden. Like really hard at it with Brayden. Uh, I really thought, honestly, I thought he was fake and phony then because she's like, what did you notice about me? He was like, your empathy towards others. Look at me. Look at me. Look at him. Does he look like he would say your empathy for others? Now I know, don't judge a book by its cover. But I'm going to tell you, uh, I think on the front, the cover would say, how to be a douche. And then you'd open it up and there would be a picture of him. I just get douchey from him. I just do. I I get fakey and I get douchey. Um, so after this, he then goes to the bar and he's talking about um uh, he's talking about oh how he was how he was sucking face with her and this and that, and it was organic and it came up naturally and blah blah blah. All this stuff in front of like his in front of her brother. And Nehemiah was like, oh, shit, if I can't, I can't, I can't with this. Um, he, and then Nehemiah says that, you know, he has a lot, he has a lot of energy, but he is kind of pushing towards arrogance and then he thinks he has a huge ego. So Nehemiah comes up, takes his, takes his, um, all of his, his stuff off, his wig, his hat, his uh, mustache. So one guy was like, wait, that's a, it's a fake mustache? You couldn't tell that that's a fake mustache. I'm going to tell you. Stevie Wonder could be in the room and he could tell that was a fake mustache. That was a fake mustache. Um, and Nehemiah says he's heard some questionable things. And didn't at that point, didn't Caleb the pro wrestler look right over at, at um, Braden and was like, mm, mm. Braden looked nervous. 
And didn't Brayden then try and come off like he's not cocky by calling himself, um, he called himself a dork. Like, oh, I'm, I'm such a dork and I don't know why somebody like her would want a dork like me. <laughs> you don't think that at all. You think a lot of yourself. Nehemiah had talked to Charity and she said really good things about a um, Aaron B. She said about how, he said about how Aaron S. is kind of skeptical about this process, which he can understand and she can understand. And then he said that Brayden was two different people before the kiss and after the kiss. After the kiss, he was really cocky. Um, and, Ch and Charity said, it made the hairs on my arm stand up. Okay. So she goes in, talks to Brayden, told her what the, br what, what, um, her brother had said. And he then, he then says, oh no, that wasn't, that wasn't it at all. Um, I wasn't cocky. I was just very happy and very, I, I, I had a lot of energy and Charity, and Charity sure did buy it up and, but, and was like, Oh, okay. And he also said, um, she also said that her brother had said that he was talking like he thinks he's really, he knows he's going to get the first impression rose. And he said he doesn't, he doesn't think he's going to get it at all. And he was just very excited about, about their kiss. She believed him. She absolutely a hundred percent believed him. They took a little bit of a break. She comes back and she gives him the fine. She gives him the first impression rose. Like all on the sly gives it to him. What the hell? I thought you listened to what your what your brother says. Mm -mm. She gave it to him because she wants somebody who's excited about them. Who's not going to like, you know, keep them undercover. Who's going to be real excited for them. Bullshit. I hated that. What the fuck was that? So the two of them go back to join the other guys, and then it comes out that he got it. I don't know. Listen, I really like Charity a lot, but at that point, I was like, F you. <sighs> I don't like Brayden. I don't like Brayden at all. So this rose ceremony comes up. Guys that are in. The guys that are in were Aaron B., John, Xavier, Joey, Caleb B., the wrestler, um, Warwick, Aaron S, Caleb A, Adrian, James, um, Sean, that's the guy with the big check. And he was, he was like, oh, what am I going to do? If, if I don't, if I don't get picked, I got this check. I brought this check. The fuck am I going to do with this check? I brought this check. I gave my heart. Do you think I can take my heart back? Um, Michael Tanner. Yeah. Doughton, um, a Caleb with a K, Caleb K, John Henry, Josh, and then the final was Spencer. Spencer, Spencer was really worried. Now the guys that were that were out, I have no idea because it's the first night. It, they didn't show their names. I don't know. I have no idea. Let me just tell you: if hometowns come to the four one two, the Berg, watch out. Okay, so listen, it looks like for the season, the big villain is going to be Brayden. I can see that. I totally get that. Um, and also, it looks like Sean with the big check might be a dickhead too. Um, and then in the previews for the rest of the season, the one thing that got me was like the one scene where she just leaves her shoe behind. Was this like... Cinderella or is it she just like so pissed and so upset that she just walks with one shoe I don't know so that was that tell me who your favorite is now listen I'm saying that some of these people that I really like them like I'm like hey let's go Tanner or hey Joey Joey's pretty nice and then watch watch it be like Hayden Hayden whenever it was like Gabby and um, Rachel, and I thought he was so great because he had that dog, because he was a dog lover, and they turned out to be a raging dick, so, <laughs> oh, that doesn't sound good, so anyways, please tell me, um, who do you think's going to make it, who do you think's going to make it to the end, who do you, who can't you stand, um, let me know, and with that, I'm wrapping this up. If nobody told you yet today, I love you. You are loved, seen, and heard. Please make sure that you put love, kindness, compassion, acceptance, hope, and positivity out there. 
treat everyone with kindness and the way you would want to be treated. Let's also take care of one another. And I will see you guys hopefully tomorrow. Talk to you later. Bye guys.